Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sani, our Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the morphology of the heart, which has been eviscerated from this cadaver. Let's take a look at how the heart is oriented inside the thorax. This is the way we hold the heart. We put the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart on the palm of our left hand, and then we dorsiflex our left hand, radially deviate. So this is the orientation of our heart inside our own chest. So once we do like this, we get four borders and four surfaces and a few sulci and grooves. So let's take them one by one. Now I'm going to turn back the heart. This border that we see here, this is the right border of the heart. The right border of the heart is formed by the right atrium. It extends from opening of the inferior vena cava to the opening of the superior vena cava. And we can see there's a shallow sulcus here. This is called the sulcus terminalis. So this is the right border of the heart. The left border of the heart is this one. This is formed mostly by the left ventricle and a little bit by the left atrium. Then we come to the inferior border of the heart. The inferior border of the heart is formed mostly by the right ventricle and a very little by the left ventricle. And then we have the superior border of the heart. The superior border of the heart is formed mostly by the left atrium and a little bit by the right atrium. That brings me to the next point. This is the apex of the heart. The apex of the heart is formed by the infrolateral surface of the left ventricle. And this is the one which is located in relation to the fifth left intercostal space, nine centimeters from the mid-sternal line. This is a plain chest x ray to show the right, left, and inferior borders of the heart marked A, B, C, and the apex with an arrow. And diametrically opposite to the apex, that means my finger is going like this. And for that, I'll have to turn the heart. This is the base of the heart. Normally the base of the heart is covered and we can see it is covered by the four pulmonary veins. So these are the two right pulmonary veins and these are the two left pulmonary veins. If we were to remove this, then that will be the base of the heart. The base of the heart is formed mostly by the left atrium, which I mentioned is covered by the opening of the pulmonary veins. The base of the heart extends from the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk, which is approximately here, to the coronary sulcus, which is here. So this much is the extent of the base of the heart. The base of the heart is related to the oblique pericardial sinus, which is in this place where my finger is located. And it is also related to the esophagus and to the T6 to the T9 vertebra. So therefore, if we want to take a look at the base of the heart, we have to do a lateral chest x-ray. And the portion in front of the corresponding vertebra will be the base of the heart, which is the left atrium. This is a barium swallow to show the esophagus and a lateral chest x-ray with arrows pointing at the base of the heart, namely the left atrium. If we put any transesophageal ECG lead, or we want to do a transesophageal echocardiography, we will see the activity of the left atrium, which is formed mostly by the base of the heart. Now let's take a look at the surfaces. Remember, we have kept the heart like this. So therefore, the surfaces are also in the same orientation. This surface that we see here, this is the anterior or the sternocostal surface. And I would like you to notice, I'm pressing, and you can see how the consistency is. This was covered, the whole heart was covered by a thin membrane which is called the epicardium, which is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium which we have removed. And under that there was a thick layer of fat which also we have shaved off and we can see the individual muscle fibers. This is the myocardium. So this is the sternocostal or the anterior surface of the heart. This is formed mostly by the right ventricle. Then we have the right surface of the heart. The right surface of the heart is formed by the right atrium just like the right border was formed by the right atrium. So this is the right surface, right atrium. Then we have the left surface of the heart. This is the left pulmonary surface. This is formed by the left ventricle. And finally, we have something very important. We have the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart. And this was how the heart was resting on my palm. And this is the way the heart rests on the diaphragm. And it is attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm by means of the pericardiophrenic ligament. So therefore, this is the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart. This is also formed mostly by the left ventricle and a little bit by the right ventricle. And I will turn this to show you something very unique on the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface. If you take a look at these muscle fibers, of course, I can show you only by pressing here. The consistency is considerably different and the appearance is considerably different. This is more firm, almost hard in consistency and it is not yielding to my finger like this area or this area. 
In all probability, this is an area of inferior wall ischemia or infarction, and this has become fibrosed. So I would say that this cadaver during life had sustained inferior diaphragmatic wall infarction. So that's about the surfaces of the heart. Now I shall mention a very important location. I put my finger in one groove here. And you can notice that in front of my finger is the pulmonary trunk and the aortic orifice. Pulmonary trunk, aortic orifice. And behind my finger is the superior vena cava. So this is the transverse pericardial sinus. Transverse pericardial sinus is the embryonic remnant of the space between the arterial end of the heart and the venous end of the heart. So this is the arterial end, this is the venous end when the heart tube folded. And the inferior limit of that is formed by the base of the heart, which I said is formed by the left atrium. This is a very useful landmark. This is the place where cardiothoracic surgeons put their finger in order to cannulate superior vena cava and the aorta while doing a cardiopulmonary bypass connected to the heart-lung machine. This is a diagrammatic representation to show the connections to the heart-lung machine from the superior vena cava and the aorta. This is a clinically useful transverse pericardial sinus. Now let's take a look at a few other structures. We can see this projection here. It roughly looks like the ear of a person, if you stretch your imagination a little bit. This is called the right auricle, and this is the left auricle. These are the two respective, relatively non-functional appendages of the right atrium and the left atrium. But this can be a source of problem, because this portion does not contract during contraction of the atrium. There can be stasis of blood here, and that can lead to what is known as a ball thrombus. And that ball thrombus can throw an embolus, and which can lead to cerebral thromboembolism and cerebral infarction. We can see a groove running here, and we can see some blood vessels running in them, which we shall describe later. This is atrioventricular groove, or the coronary groove. This goes all the way down to the back of the heart. So therefore, this whole thing is referred to as the coronary sulcus, because it is like a crown. So therefore, this is the anterior part of the coronary sulcus, and if I turn the heart, this is the posterior part of the coronary sulcus. And we can see that it is filled with many important blood vessels. Then we can see another groove on the sternocostal surface of the heart. This is the anterior interventricular groove. And again, we can see some blood vessels here. Then if I turn the heart, we can see yet another groove here. Don't get misled by this abnormal portion which I had mentioned earlier. This is the posterior interventricular groove. And the place where the posterior interventricular groove meets the posterior coronary sulcus, this region is referred to as the crux of the heart. And many important events will be taking place at the crux of the heart. So these are the surfaces, borders, grooves, and sulci that we can see. The morphology of the heart, 